I consider the Trump administration a danger to the world that will disappear in 2020. What if I told you that Bill Gates, Greta Thunberg, Al Gore, George Soros, Prince Charles, and Cardinal Turkson were meeting in the mountains to plot a global new order to be established on the back of the COVID pandemic? An outrageous movie plot? Or is it absolutely true? Donald Trump and the Davos Connection, tonight from the editor's desk. Hello again, ladies and gentlemen. Michael Matt coming to you once again from the offices of the Remnant Newspaper. Here's something you're not apt to hear on mainstream media. Of the 18 million people in the world who've been infected with the coronavirus, 10.6 million have recovered. This is according to the latest figures from Johns Hopkins University. In other words, the vast majority of COVID patients fully recover. As this doesn't even factor in that the millions who've contracted it recovered and didn't even know they had it. Friends, we need to have a talk. I mean, let's be really clear right from the outset. COVID-19 is not a hoax, okay? Worldwide, over 650,000 people, mostly elderly, have succumbed to it. <laughs> this is not a hoax. Even with skewed death reporting, which we know is going on all over the place, this is a very serious virus. But so was the H1N1, the swine flu of 2009, which claimed the lives of a half a million people. So was the Hong Kong flu of 1968, which claimed the lives of up to four million people. Flu is a nasty business. Now, do you remember these previous epidemics, pandemics? Probably not. Why? Because the media didn't freak us out over those. The country wasn't shut down. Healthy people were not quarantined. Schools weren't closed. Church services weren't canceled. Why not? Because COVID is a thoroughly politicized virus. And we're getting conflicting recommendations from the experts that get just a little more absurd every week. Doctor, uh, your colleague, uh, Dr. Fauci, has suggested recently that goggles uh, would work even better or in addition to uh, you're talking about masks. People have come around to the reality of that. Are we are we going to look at more demands based on what Dr. Fauci has said? Well, I've seen really great face shields and I've seen them around the country. You know, I've been out to 14 states. The administration sent me out and I've gotten to see a lot of exciting face masks out there and um, face masks that come from the bottom up. And I think that's really, I think people, the American people are innovative. Those are actually pretty easy and straightforward to make. Many universities and those who have um, printers are making face shields now. So these 3D printers can really increase that production. And I think others are making so, them and they can be decorated. So Dr. Well, the dec <laughs> uh, no one's really interested in decorations. Mm -hmm. I want to know whether face shields or goggles is something we're going to hear next. I mean, this, 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 this isn't even funny. I'm so glad to see the guys from Fox over there are, are openly mocking this woman. I mean, people are losing their jobs. They're losing their homes. They're losing their mental health over this. Their kids aren't going back to school. They can't go to church. And this delusional woman with the scarves thinks that we're going to get a kick out of decorating our face shields? This is day 170, I think, of the 15 days to slow the spread, Dr. Burks. Do you have any idea of what the hell you're talking about? Because it changes all the time. No wonder nobody takes these people seriously anymore. And see, so here's, here's the thing, friends. We need to get very serious about it. We need to have a, a serious conversation about it. Here at The Remnant, we've been saying since March, since the outset of this thing, that it's not the virus that we're questioning. I don't want to get the virus. I know you don't. I know some of you have lost loved ones or friends or whatever from the virus. I've, I've known quite a few folks now who've gotten it. I don't know anyone who died. Everyone who I know, thanks be to God, has recovered. But it was never the virus that's the problem. It's the political exploitation of the pandemic, the COVID pandemic, that really, really must give all of us now serious cause for concern about the future. They're not playing games here. This isn't going anywhere. This isn't going away. And don't take my, for, my word for it. I wouldn't expect you to do that anyway. Let's talk about Davos, Switzerland. 
Here's where the leaders of the world are admitting exactly what I'm saying, that this is a Trojan horse. Now in Davos, they call it the Great Reset. And it's scheduled now to kick off in January 2021. And if you want to know what's really going on here, if you want to know why the schools are probably, many of them are not going to open in the fall, if you want to know why you're wearing that dehumanizing face mask, even in your car, <laughs> look to Davos. Now is the historical moment, the time, not only to fight severe virus, but to shape the system. We have a unique but rapidly shrinking window of opportunity to learn lessons and reset ourselves on a more sustainable path. What is it that would make it so that history would look at this crisis as the great opportunity for reset? The Great Reset is a welcome recognition that this human tragedy must be a wake-up call. The world's problems fit on three sides of a triangle. It's one versus many, man versus nature, and the unfortunate foundation is long-term versus short-term. Any recovery stimulus should have green conditions attached to it. We have to change our economy dramatically in the next 20 or 30 years, and the next 10 years is absolutely decisive. The recovery has to be greener, than any of the previous recoveries. And then we need to couple that with new initiatives to equip more people with the digital skills they'll need. We have to live up to the expectations which we have created, and we will do so. On June 2nd, 2020, just a few months ago, a couple months ago, the founder now of the World Economic Forum in Davos, Klaus Schwab, wrote an article on their website in which he just comes right out with it. He says that COVID pandemic represents a, quote, rare but narrow window of, of opportunity to reflect, reimagine, and reset our world. End quote. Those are my words. Those are his words. The world must act jointly and swiftly, says Mr. Schwab, to, quote, revamp all aspects of our societies and economies from education to social contracts and working conditions. Every country from the United States to China must participate and every industry from oil and gas to tech must be transformed, end quote. And Mr. Schwab comes right out and admits that he can't do this without, you guessed it, Bill Gates. We are particularly committed to this initiative since the forum has been at the origin in its annual meeting in Davos of the Global Fund, Gavi and SEPI, together with the Gates Foundation and other founders of those crucial organizations, particularly today. And they're all there. All the movers and shakers of the world are in Davos at one time or another. Even Prince Charles, the insufferable Prince of Wales, got into the act in Davos in January. Unless we take the action necessary and we build uh, again in a greener and more sustainable and more inclusive way, then we will end up having more and more pandemics and more and more disasters from ever, ever accelerating global warming and climate change. So this is the one moment, as, uh, as you've all been saying, when we have to, 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 to make uh, as much progress as we can. And of course, Antonio Guterres, the former Prime Minister of Portugal, who's also a Catholic and is now serving as the Secretary General of the United Nations, he's in Davos chiming in as well. A microscopic virus has closed down entire countries and economies. The Great Reset is a welcome recognition that this human tragedy must be a wake-up call. As you rightly say, it is imperative that we reimagine, rebuild, redesign, reinvigorate, and rebalance our world. Friends, the, the full picture should begin to emerge now, and I'm just giving you a sample. I mean, everyone has spoken here. Everyone who is anyone in the globalist community has gone to Davos, has delivered speeches. They come together, they network, they plan our future. This transformation essentially means that the whole way that we do business, that we live, and that we have grown accustomed to in the industrial age, will have to be changed. We will have to leave that behind us in the next 30 years to go. They need to reset everything, including the politics of the United States, the governance of the United States. 
And of course, friends, yeah, we hear a lot about the Green New Deal and all of that, right? We hear Francis with his Laudato Si encyclical and all of that. They're all working together, aren't they? The Davos 2021 Summit works closely with the, something called Climate Reality Project. And guess who runs that? The respected trustee of the World Economic Forum, Albert Gore. This crisis, the climate crisis, is way worse than people generally realize. Way worse. It is getting worse still way faster than people realize. The burden to act that is on the shoulders of the generation of people alive today is a challenge to our moral imagination. But this is Thermopylae. This is Agincourt. This is the Battle of the Bulge. This is Dunkirk. This is 9-11. We have to rise to this occasion. I can't believe this guy is still knocking around. It's unbelievable. He's almost, it's almost, it's like a spoof, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it's Al again. I mean, uh, and it's the same. And Davos brings them all in, all the ghouls from the globalist swamp. Our house is still on fire. Your inaction is fueling the flames by the hour. And we are telling you to act as if you loved your children above all else. And of course, drum roll, please. Davos, Switzerland has its elder statesman, George Soros. George Soros' uh, dinner at Davos is a bit of an institution at this event. We do, uh, he usually comes out with strong criticism of something uh, that he feels is troubling for the state of the world. He didn't hold back either when talking about the US president, saying that he was describing him as a con man, an ultimate narcissist. Even the fate of the world uh, could be at stake in 2020 and the years to come as well, perhaps referencing there the upcoming, of course, election in the United States too. So George Soros really, you know, using his platform here at Davos to speak to those, you know, rich and famous who come to the World Economic Forum. Uh, we know that he's uh, in the past has been a major donor to the Democratic Party in the United States. He didn't say anything about which candidate he might be supporting in the Democratic primary, uh, but certainly uh, no holding back on his criticism of President Trump. So what's this all about? I think, you know, I think we all sort of in our hearts, we kind of realize what's going on here. This is not about COVID anymore. This is about a, a reset of everything. And the United States of America is in the way right now of all of it. So they are destabilizing our entire country. The Great Reset, then, politically, economically, it wants to implement massive socialist programs. And, of course, global climate change along the lines of the Green New Deal. The regulation is going to be unbelievable. And no one, no country, will be allowed to opt out of this. Why? Well, if an individual country opts out of the Great Reset, they're going to be endangering the whole world community, the whole world, through future pandemics that will be caused by climate change, Al Gore says, and overpopulation, says Bill Gates. You see how it works? No country will be allowed to opt out. This is what we're facing in November. <laughs> and if you think the Catholic Church is going to protect you from what's coming from this globalist takeover nightmare, think again. We've been through all this before, leaving aside Pachamama and leaving aside Laudato Si, which is the encyclical of the globalists. It's the encyclical of the United Nations. I'm sure that we have all read this magnificent, magnificent encyclical that His uh, Holiness Pope Francis has uh, blessed us with. It's the encyclical of AOC. It's the encyclical of the Green New Deal. Leaving that aside, Francis has already announced the global economic reset of his own last year. I don't know what makes this man think, think that he's an economist. I don't know where he learned all of this down in Argentina, but he's an amazing guy. He knows everything but theology. Have you noticed that? He already announced his, his coming global economic reset. He calls it, in his humility, the economy Francesco. The economy of Francis. Remember, we showed you a bit of this. I'll show you a little more here. I will come for the economy of Francesco because we need a new economy, a new vision, and the teachings of Pope Francis uh, in Laudato Si and in other teachings help to give us the pathway to a better world. Isn't that something? This was announced last year, mid-2019. It's almost as, as if Francis knew that the COVID pandemic and the resulting economic collapse were coming. <laughs> I, wonder, I wonder how he knew that. Isn't that weird? That he was already calling for an economic reset? 
And poor Francis, he couldn't make it out to Davos back in January when the big party happened. But he did send his representative, the globalist cardinal, Peter Turkson, in his place. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm pleased to welcome His Eminence Cardinal Turkson, Prefect of the Dicastery for Promoting Human, Integral Human Development of the Vatican City State, with a special message from His Holiness Pope Francis. Your Eminence, it is a pleasure to welcome you back to Davos. The stage is yours. This is to Professor Klaus Schwab, Executive Chairman of the World Economic Forum. As the World Economic Forum celebrates its 50th anniversary, I send greetings and prayerful good wishes to all taking part in this year's gathering. So when they tell you, when they tell all of us to stay home, wear your mask so grandma doesn't get sick, please understand what's really going on here. They don't care about your grandmother. They don't care about old people, these people. They don't care about babies. They want them aborted so that they can save the common home. Abort babies, millions of them all over the world. They don't care about babies. They don't care about old people. In fact, if you want to save your grandma, tell the globalists to stay the hell away from her. You remember how some of them, like Cuomo and characters like this, were running COVID recovering patients through nursing homes? That's how much they care about grandma. And the name of the game now is to bring the United States economy to its knees, get it out of the way, so that everyone will want the Great Reset. Make the new normal so intolerably abnormal that even you and I, maybe, you know, at some point in the near future, we'll be begging for the vaccines because we'll be driven crazy by that point. Begging for whatever else is going to keep us safe, according to our jailers and our handlers and our zookeepers, you see? That's what they want. That's why they keep using this term, new normal. You know what we do to fight back? Go to work. Go back to school. If you're healthy, take off the mask. Look at the big picture. The choice is simple, friends. Stand with America right now. Or fall with the new world order in the not-so-distant future. There's no other choice.